Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Day six of the Slime Experiment Development. Welcome, welcome. Let's get some music started, shall we? Oh, yeah. All right. So, last time when we left off, we had finished a number of levels, leaving only level nine and ten for world one remaining. However, while I was going about my day yesterday after stream, I was thinking potentially there are things that we could add and do. So I spent some time making some more sprites for new block things that look like new elements of the game and came up with some stuff. So, fun fun. Um, the one thing I will say is I also got some music. So we can add some more music and whatnot, and it's all by the same artist named Tim Beak. And I used his uh, a couple of his songs, I think, over in my previous game. I'm just a slime, but now I have more of them. Kind of going for like a kind of chill, uh, relaxing sort of vibe, kind of. Uh, I scoured the internet. Well, not the internet. I scoured, uh, I think it's Itch.io or something like that. This plays a host like a bunch of different like assets for games and games themselves and stuff like that where uh artists can upload stuff and say yeah you can use this as long as you credit me in the game and all that so that's where i kind of get some free stuff from uh, a lot of good stuff in there from sound effects to sprites to other stuff um mainly i've just used it for music and visual effects like uh fireballs and stuff like that uh but yeah so we got some of his music we're going to add that in right now and then we're going to add in the sprite things that i've added and all that good jazz so switch on over to the game Whoa, that was weird for some reason the uh window capture is being wonky today i don't know man anyway so i made these two new folders music and sound effects and i deleted the other music we had here because i don't really want to list like dozens of people in my uh game credits unless they're you know patrons if i do decide to go that route but i want to keep things a little bit neat a little bit tidy so having like one person who made music i think is fine so i'm pulling in 11 different tracks that uh will be used throughout the game so i'm thinking like once per world, we'll switch the music up. So we have the main menu music, we have the world one, two, three, four, five, six, ten music, and then that's these eleven songs that we have here. So that's kind of the uh, the plan. Now we also, well, we I and mean, I also went ahead and I got some sound effects, and I sort of just made these sound effects myself with uh actually made with like nail clippers to be completely honest i did not have like anything i was, I was scouring for like things i can use to make like sound effects for like a lever and a pressure plate and the only thing i had that could make any decent sound was a fingernail clipper and a flashlight so i used them for that let me let me pause my uh, music here i can double click on these You might be able to just barely hear that. I'm not sure how the volume is. This is the flashlight. I think I'll use this for pressure plate, maybe. And then this is the uh, fingernail clippers making a, a noise. And I might just use that for the lever. So continue playing the music. Okay, so that's those sound effects. We also have some more assets to bring in. Let me just go grab those. So I added a variety of things here. Um, first, uh, sort of what Ryle was saying yesterday in chat about having a block where if you move the block, you move the world. Uh, I was thinking about having something that kind of like changes your expectations of what a block would do. So I made this block that I'm calling a pull block and I made it purple because that's kind of on the opposite side of the color wheel as yellow. 
And the plan for this one is we're not going to move the level around because I just don't think I'll be able to do that. But what I can do is make you like pull the block when you're trying to run into it and push it, right? So the plan is you like uh, have the block and you like press D, for example, to go into it. You and the block are going to move backwards. So it's going to be like inverted controls when you touch the block, kind of, right? That's the plan for that one anyway. Next up, I have this block. Oop, I not drag a block. There we go. This one which I'm going to call the destroyer block. And what it is going to do is it's going to let you destroy any block that you push it into. So if you push it into a lever, you push it into a immobile block. If you push it into a movable block, a cage, an enemy, a pressure plate, doesn't matter what, if you push it into it, it'll destroy that block and the destroyer block as well. So it's kind of like a free, like one time, just destroy this thing. It'll even destroy pitfalls. So that's cool. Next, I added some portals. I mean, two different portals, and I made what I think will be an animation for them. I don't know. I'll have to actually see how it's animated. So we want to set these to be multiple. Apply. So I made a yellow, not a yellow, a, uh, an orange and a blue one, kind of like in the, the portal game, uh, whatnot. So the idea is the, the portal itself will kind of float up and down, and you'll be able to go from point A to point B. You'll be able to move blocks in through the portals and stuff like that, so it'll bring a whole new aspect. I can like close off rooms and make a little different like that, right? Then, I added two more things, one of them being an attack tower and a projectile. So this attack tower, the plan for it is it's just going to sit somewhere and it'll fire this little projectile every so often. And the projectile will basically uh, like reset. Whatever it hits, I think, is what the plan will be, or to like destroy it. So I, th I think destroying it would be better. If it hits the player, they'll just like uh, reset the puzzle. Um, I think that would be how that goes. So it'll like destroy a movable block, but if that's the case, then we will put in a like a pressure plate or a lever or something that will allow you to respawn. The, uh, the item that gets destroyed, right? Because we don't want the puzzle to be locked and be forced to uh, do that. So those are the ones that I added. I think that's everything that I've added from there. Yeah, so I was trying to get some like proper sound effects for like levers and um, pressure plates and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I just could not find like sound effects online for free. Um, I was searching the, the itch.io. Right, is that what it's called, by the way? Let me, let me just double check. I want to say the right name here. Yeah, it's itch.io. So, a variety of people there who upload stuff. Some of it's free, and they say you can use it in their games as long as you credit them. Some people are even like, yeah, you can just use this. I don't need credit. Um, others are like, uh, if there's things you can like buy, like there's a uh, thing for sale up there that you can buy and you can use them in your stuff and all that you just have to kind of read each person's individual like stuff see if you can use it so it's got a lot of good assets if you're if you're looking for you know, some, some basic assets to use for a game and whatnot and you don't mind that they've been used by other people and all that good jazz so let's go ahead and open up level one nine so we can make these things so first of all <clears throat> We need to go into the sprite editor and slice these bad boys up. So by count, and there are five columns. We'll slice this. Let's grab this one, and we need to slice this, but there's only four columns here. So I didn't test to see if these animated would look good or not, so we'll just kind of have to see what happens when we uh, 
test them here. Okay, so let's grab this one first. We're gonna go to here. And did I make an animation? I did not make an animation. Hold on. Let me create a new folder before I do that. Folder. I'm gonna call that animations. I'm just gonna move the conveyor belt over here to the animations thing. All right, let's go ahead and drag and drop these now. So in animations, we want to do orange portal save. Okay. Now that I look at this, this might be a little bit tall. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. So we're just gonna hit play, watch it bob up and down. Let's set that to six, maybe? Hmm, four. We just want a nice, like, leisurely bobbing of it, right? Maybe even two. It's not smooth. I think four is going to be the one we have to use here. Okay. So we'll use four for that animation speed. And let's go ahead and do the blue one as well. So blue portal in the animation. Okay. And we want to set that to four as well and just hit play. And there it goes. All right, cool. Those are done. Next, the animation for the attack pillar. Oop. Attack pillar. Okay, and then let's hit play here. So really, I just made this, uh, like, made it like an orb is spinning on top of it, right? Let's go ahead and set that down to six and see how that looks. What, eight? He's a little fast, seven. That looks pretty smooth. So, I think we'll go with seven there for that one. Perfect. And then, I guess we can just get out all of our blocks here. So we got our push block, we have our destroyer block, we have our projectile. Um, yeah. All right, cool. I'm gonna just rename these real quick. I think I'm going to rename this pull block to be an inverse block. Okay. Um, and then for all of them, we want to set the, set them to be the character background. So the one thing with the portals is I did kind of want the player to be able to go behind like the top of the portal, but since I made it all one piece, I'm going to have to make them all foreground or all not. But, yeah. I think we'll just do a above background for those. And then for the attack tower, we'll let the player go behind it. The rest of them, though, we don't want the player to be able to go behind. Uh, the projectile, though, I guess we'll leave it on the character level. That's fine. So the player can't go behind anything except for the attack tower. That's how we'll have this kind of thing laid out, right? Okay. Now let me just double check we have for this level. I think I have that stuff laid. Perfect. Okay. Right, okay. All right, perfect, 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 perfect. So, we need to make some new scripts. Let's go ahead and open up our script thing here. Create script, we're gonna call this destroyer block, create script, inverse block, okay. create script, portal script, and then create script, attack, tower. And then we're going to create a new script as well called attack projectile. Okay. Perfect. So projectile, we want to add the attack projectile. Well, hold on, let me
Probably move that. It doesn't mess that up, does it? No, okay, perfect. But I'm actually gonna move these back into here real quick before I anything else. It just messes it up if I try to open it in the uh, viewer. I would forget. All right, so destroyer block needs the destroyer block script. The inverse block needs the inverse block script. The attack tower needs the attack tower script. And then the portals just need the portal script. Go. All right, so. What we want to do is for each portal, we want to create an empty called portal TP location. We'll call it. That way we can just have a, uh, a thing that's attached to the portal that we can be like, all right, uh, this one, I want to move them over here as we'll teleport to, right? So that's what we'll do there. We should probably also get the hitbox going on here. So let's go with a capsule collider for this guy. And a capsule collider for that guy. Maybe select multiple and uh Hit that button you can actually select both of their things not at the same time unfortunately but uh i think i'll go ahead and make it like this there we go so if you touch any of that area you'll get teleported out of the plants so we need to set those as is trigger that way they trigger a teleportation basically on um, the attack tower we want to add a let's go to capsule collider why not we'll switch to horizontal and we're actually going to make this be uh like right here but the player can go behind it but they cannot go like here where it's standing right so they can't go over it essentially The inverse box, we'll add a box collider. The destroyer box will have a box collider. And we will want to bring this guy in a little bit. Kind of like what we have with the uh, pushable block. We want to have it a little outside there. Destroyer block, we want to really make sure that this one is pretty much on the sprites. Whatever you touch just goes bam. Alright. And then the projectile which given its shape a capsule will probably be the best option here. And so we're just going to do this. We're going to kind of ignore some of the geometry of it. Right like that. So that'll be our lovely little projectile anything touches this little thing here die okay perfect so now we have to go about scripting everything excellent also one thing i forgot to do when i was making all these assets was to make uh new colors for the next level set so Probably kind of a good thing we're going to be focusing on these today and then maybe finishing level 9 and 10 today and then tomorrow I'll have time between uh, streams in order to make different colored tiles that are going to be like these. I'm really just going to grab a paint thing and fill them in. Right. Just a moment here.
Okay. So. What would be the easiest one to start with? Probably the attack projectile. And you know what? I might as well just open them all up. Um, so, attack tower, destroyer block, inverse block, portal script. Okay. So, we're just going to get rid of all of this. We're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of this. Nyeh. Okay, the attack projectile. What we want to do is do on collision, enter 2D. We want to do a switch for the case. Just like in our uh, some of our other scripts, we want to take the uh, string object and goes equal collision dot game object dot tag. I think is what we want to do. Okay. So we want to do player. Honestly, I should real quick copy this. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, damn it. There we go. Okay, so we have player. We have movable block. We have inverse block. We have enemy, and we have destroyer block, which means we uh, need to real quick uh, add tags for our stuff here. So we're going to add tags. We got movable block. We have destroyer block. We got inverse block. I'm gonna add a projectile one as well. Okay, is there anything else that we could hit? Let me look at the prefab real quick, just to make sure. Um, we have the enemy, we have our character. Block, yeah, nothing else is gonna be moving, so that's everything. All right, so let's add or tags to these. The projectile. Destroyer block. Inverse block. And the rest is fine. Okay. So basically, what we want to do is destroy collision.game object. And then destroy this. Uh, for the enemy, level reset. I also think I need to manipulate this a little bit more, especially with changing stuff around. So how do I do enemies? Let me see. So with the enemy, I take an actual game object in. So rather than destroying the enemy, the ideal thing to do here would be to do collision.gameobject.setActive false. We'll just make it invisible and then we'll go destroy this, destroy the projectile. All right. And basically for the other blocks, we just need to do the same thing because uh, that's all that matters right there. Okay. And then for the player, it's going to be a bit different because the player is basically going to die. 
So we need to actually set the level. So we need to do basically level reset LR and then on. Actually, let's just copy this here. We'll do LR equals game object dot find game object with tag um level dot get component level reset and then we want to do lr dot reset level if the player gets hit that should be all we have to do for the destroyer block or not destroyer block, the, the attack projectile. Easy peasy. We just do an on enter thing. Um, and I guess we need something to determine whether or not it it's a wall. So if I just do case default destroy this break. Literal, a default, literal default, Cappy. How did you put a default? Is it that? Hold on. What did the other thing say? I know we can use a default somewhere. default class cases, I know that. Is it just default? Yeah, okay, it's just default. I'm dumb. So basically, if none of these happen, it'll default to this, which means it should be fine. So we need to also, I just remembered, we need to actually make the projectile move, so we need a rigid body for the velocity. So we need to go rigid body D. And I think it needs to be dynamic. Collision detection continuous, freeze Z rotation, and start awake. Okay. So the rigid body here does not matter. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter for the attack projectile, because the attack projectile, it doesn't care about anything. Um, question, if I were to start the game, now nothing's going to move, but I can go to the scene and move this around. Okay, so it takes that out. Hmm. Didn't destroy the projectile, though? Maybe it's because I was just, uh, I moved it. Do I need this dot game object maybe though? Because it wouldn't just destroy the script, right? Hold on, let me, let me test. Let's see what exactly is happening here. I'm pretty sure I've used destroy this before and it just destroys the game object, not the... Did it really destroy the... It actually destroyed the... Uh... Okay. Oh. It destroyed the script, not the game object. That's a new one for me. I it actually destroyed the game object, but nope, apparently I gotta do this dot game object, so it's me. Okay. Excellent. So I think that's the attack projectile done. 
we can uh, set that aside for now. Um, although, I'm going to level reset. We need to add some more stuff here. So let's go ahead and copy this list. Let's make a list of... Well, I guess the, the inverse blocks and destroyer blocks would be part of the spawn items thing. The portals wouldn't matter. The only thing to do would be check to see if we have any attack projectiles. So... We would want to do... Um, game object list. Uh, let's call it projectiles equals game object dot find game objects with tag projectile and this will make it so we find every game object that has the tag projectile and we will then check if projectile dot length is greater than zero which means it has any in that we go for each game object in projectile we want to do g dot or destroy destroy g we just destroy it thumbs up cool all right we'll have to test that of course to see if it actually works but in theory it should okay um so that's attack projectile done for now Next, the attack tower. So we need to do a serialized field for a game object called projectile. Easy peasy. We also want a serialized field uh, of an integer called time to attack. And another serialized field called force, which we're going to be using to propel the projectile, and then another serialized field with a vector 3, or not, a string called direction. Okay. So, with these, we're going to use them to fire the projectile. Let's also create a private int called timer that we will use to keep track of that. So we want to make a private void fire projectile. Easy peasy. So first of all, we want to make a switch with direction in it. And we make a case for each direction, just like we have with the conveyor belts for left, right, up, or down. So we'll start with left, we'll start with right, we'll start with up, and we'll start with down. All right. So with each of these, well, I guess before we do the switch, we need to check to see if we can fire projectile which means we need an update as well. Update. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, we want to take if timer is greater than or equal to time to attack, we want to fire projectile. Else, and we also want to set timer equals zero. Otherwise, we want to take timer plus equals time dot delta time. Why? 
The interval in seconds to the last frame. All right, it's float, isn't it? Okay, we'll do float here instead. That's fine. I always forget what's what here. So we have a float, a float, and whatnot. So this will take from the time delta time plus the plus the timer, which will set basically the, the loop of how often it fires. So don't worry about the whole what time delta time is. It's what what would the time delta time? The interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one. Right, so that's basically what uh it is. Okay. So it can be like less than a couple of seconds. So it's a good way to keep track of time. And we'll do that. Alright, so that's what we do in the update. We check if timer is greater than or equal to time to attack. If it is, we attack. And we set the timer back to zero. But we can continue to add to it. Now we can fire the projectile. Which let's open up our conveyor belt script. So we just have less things to think about. Because we just want the velocity to change here. So we can grab our conveyor belt. And we can take this and just throw it over here. Okay. So these are basically opposite forces. We just want to take these and then correct them. So we want to do an instantiate, or I guess we have a new game object, proj equals instantiate, and then projectile, comma, um, We'll just do transform for now. I guess I could just do projectile, and then we can worry about the transformation of pointing in the correct direction uh, later. Okay, so we want to do proj dot git component um, rigid body two d dot velocity equals uh, new vector three, and then we want to do force zero zero. Yeah, we can do a negative there because left should be negative, right should be positive. Yada yada. So let's copy this, paste it down here, remove the negative. Should have copied both lines. I don't know why I didn't. Go. All right, let's go ahead and just copy this again. Mm -hmm. Fine. Forgot you can't use the same variable multiple times here. Okay, there we go. Cool, so I'm gonna just slide this to the side here. So then the force for up should be a positive force. So we're just gonna take this, put a zero there, and then do force. We're gonna take force here, put a zero, do that, do negative force for down. Okay. So that should get our projectile spawned and then moving in the correct location. However, we want to make sure that it is pointing in the correct direction as well, and also that it's kind of firing from the orb itself, not from, say, the middle of the area. So what we need to do is take a projectile, our destroyer block or attack tower and stuff. So let's set this to be at zero, zero. Okay, the projectile, so it's facing up begin with, right? So if it's facing up, what if I do zero there for this? Okay. Let's turn snapping off real quick. Okay. 
So we want to take, first of all, and have our projectile spawn here. So we want to take, it looks like just plus point, 3.75 maybe. Yeah, I think that would be good. All right, so we take our projectile and we go proj.transform.position equals um well let's 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 do something else here real quick uh vector three uh pos equals transform dot position and we do vector three or not vector three we do uh pos dot that's a y value right yeah y dot y plus equals 0 0.75 f and then we do projectile transform equals pos so that should spawn the projectile where we want it to spawn okay however we also down here need to put it in the correct direction so it's already facing up so that's fine now how do we make it go to the correct location. Well, let's just manipulate these values and see what happens if we do so. So negative one scale doesn't do anything for that. A negative one scale for that, we point it down. But I think what I could do is just add some rotation to it. Yeah, so we want to do rotation. So negative 90 is left, and then 90 would be right, or, yeah. Okay. So, for left, we want to do proj.transform.rotation, oops, rotation equals new vector 3 um, 0, 0, 0090 of course you cannot create a new vector with given 3 cannot it apply vector 3 to criterion do I have to do like that can I just do dot z equals negative or equals 90 no, because it's read only, right? What? A quaturian that soars a rotation of a transform in the world cannot modify the form rotation that is not a variable. How do I make a quaturian then? Well, it's new. Quaterion 0090 is, is that? Oh, do I have to do Quaterion dot Quaternion? It literally just said, hold on. Not rename. I'll turn in dot. How do I like, oh my God. <sighs> do I have to do like vector three or equals or vector three zero zero ninety like that. What? 
Oh, I forgot a comma. And then can I just do this? No, because that is a vector three and a quaterion. Okay. That's it, you little shits. How to edit rotation in code. Okay. you say to me? Okay. I got it. We're not gonna use rotation. Fuck that shit. We're just gonna use the scale. Okay, so... If we change uh, this to negative one, it turns down. If we change the Z to be negative one, it doesn't do anything. Uh, let's go negative one and then negative one here. Push downward. Hmm. Do I actually have to change the fucking rotation? Projectile, up, left, right, down. So, I guess we're just gonna copy this. Call that Proj L, Projectile L. Then we wanna do, well, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be facing the right direction now anyway. Okay. here in just a moment, but right now, let's just that. Okay. It's really annoying that in the switches, you can't, like, have the same variable multiple times. It's just unfortunate. Okay. So this will solve the problem. Let's hit save. Let's go over here. Are you... Okay. It wasn't loading for some reason. Okay. So projectile you. Or I call this one. And we're going to copy. Paste, paste, paste. Call this one projectile D for down. And we need it to go 180 there. This one is going to be 90. Which means it points to the left, so we're going to call this projectile L. This one's going to be projectile D, you know, DR for right. Which means it goes negative 90. Now, I probably could have done this with code if I really wanted to look up how exactly to mess with this, but. This is just like a one-off thing. Screw that! I'm not doing it. So, let's go ahead and go into our prefab. I'm just going to grab all of our projectiles, since we don't have anything else to do with them, to my knowledge. And then we click on our, dis not destroy, but our attack tower. And we're going to go ahead and copy in all of these. So, D, L, R, U. 
Okay, time to attack. Let's say two seconds. Force, let's set that to three. And then direction, we're going to leave blank for right now. Okay, let's get rid of our projectiles here. And for our attack tower test, let's go ahead and make it shoot up because there's more space upward to look at. All right, so it's going to attack. Let's see what happens. Perfect. It hits the wall and gets destroyed. That's what I wanted it to do. Although the force is a little weak. Five isn't bad. What about six? Keep in mind, we can change it around as we need to. I think six is fine. Okay. Let's also check if I do right. Okay, right goes the correct direction. What about left? Perfect, and then down. Oh. It's hitting the uh, thing here. Okay. How can I get it to ignore that? Mm -hmm. Oh, incidentally. Maybe I don't have it attack downwards. Maybe I just remove that possibility. I'm just gonna remove that possibility. I don't want to deal with that nonsense. Okay, so let's save that. And since I can destroy projectile D. I need to do a couple things here real quick. First and foremost, delete projectile D. You then need to I'm going to okay they're all already on the character level okay perfect um we need to grab all of these and in their update mode we need to change this to unscaled time so when we pause they're still going to be moving in the background we don't want them to to not be moving also is that the case for this as well it is let me open this bad boy up unscaled time Save that. Nothing else is animated, right? No, except for the enemy, which is already on scaled time. Perfect. Okay. So we have the attack tower done. It now attacks stuff. Hooray. What's that? Oh my god, the fucking updater graph thing. I hate this error because it's just a nonsense error. It doesn't do anything. All right. So we got our attack tower completed. Let's go ahead and code that down into. Let's remove the up by default. Thing there, and then, uh, yeah, that should work. All right, I'll set there. Attack tower done. All right, next it might be easiest to do the inverse block. He says, and it turns out to not actually be the easiest block. Okay. So, let me I open up the movable block. It didn't have any like special code in it, did it? It just had the conveyor belt, right? Okay. The movable block really just has a thing like this, which I think we should do also for uh, the inverse block so we can travel on conveyor belts. Let's just go ahead and copy all of this, I guess. I'll paste it into the conveyor belt area here. 
Easy peasy. So on awake, it's going to get the rigid body. And if it is movable, it's going to take the conveyor change and all that good jazz. Which means in the conveyor belt, we actually need to edit that to also take inverse blocks. So let's open up our conveyor belt. Rip. However, since it's an inverse block, it's going to work the opposite way. So we have the case player, the case movable block. I'm just going to grab all this. Down here, case, inverse block, paste that there. That's what I did, right? Move block, okay, yeah. Uh, the game object tag, right? Yep. Okay. So we have the inverse block. Uh, we're going to call it IB instead of MB, and we need to call this inverse block. And inverse block here, too. Block. All right. Now I'm just gonna hit Control uh, F and do MB. Okay. Uh, inverse blocks here, so I'm gonna do I and B instead. There we go. All right. Very easily just switched all of those around. That down here. All right, so inverse block. We want to have the movement vector. So I think all we really have to do is just change these values around from negative to positive. Like that. And I think that's how we get away with it. We also have to do this in the on trigger enter. So let's paste that there. And let's see. So up here, we do four. All right, so we just need to make these the opposite again. Okay, we have the opposite, but we also need to make these We need to use these things here, right? Um also it changes movement vector dot line. Okay. movement vector dot y equals zero and you know I'm just gonna take a screenshot I'll paint here we go just so I don't have to keep scrolling back up and down all right so this one is less than or equal to zero but I think we actually want it to be greater than or equal to zero because we're dealing with negative force, right? No, right? No, yeah. Well. So we take like a negative two, pass it in through here. That means that would be negative two. Yeah, so we want greater than or equal to zero. But it would never be greater than or equal to zero, though, right? What? What does this code do? It's... All right, this is not zero, it's supposed to be force. Right. Right, 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 right. So 
So do I actually want less than or equal there? Let me change these before I forget. Then we can deal with the... Right, so basically, we just want to check whether or not we are setting that equal to zero. Because the last thing we do is block by the setting to eventual life. Why are we doing this? Whatever. Let, let's just let's just do it, and we'll test it out. See how it goes. Okay. So we have our movement vectors, and this one positive. So just like the, I'm gonna just copy what the other ones have. Uh, since this one is negative, it would be like that negative this one's positive so it would be greater than negative would be less than i'm not sure if i have to switch those around or not but we'll just do that for now um so let's just see if the inverse block works uh for the conveyor belts at least that right okay so let's real quick we're just going to move these portals out of the way and then we're going to add a conveyor belt in here and this conveyor belt, I'm just going to have it go right. Simple enough, right? Let's go ahead and move the inverse block up a bit. I mean, where's our spawn point at? Down here. Let's just move it over here. All right, let's test that out. Just see what happens. So if I push this, it shouldn't go... Oh. Inverse block. It needs a rigid body. Body 2D to be specific. Um, it needs continuous. It needs no gravity. It needs to freeze the Z. Also, before I forget, this one also needs a rigid body so you can move it around. Zero, continuous, don't rotate Z. Perfect, okay. Now I should be able to hit play and allow me to push this block. So... The total conveyor change is negative 2, but it's not, like, doing anything. It's not, like, moving. Why are you not moving? Um, is movable is true. When it goes on, right, because they're flipped, it's, it's messed up. So let's go, let's flip these all around to the opposite of what they currently are. Wait, that, that doesn't make sense, right? This should be less than. Yes. Okay. Let's try it now. So unpause, reload it. Okay, push this. And did it kind of move there for a second, or was that just my imagination? I guess that was me kind of getting pushed on the conveyor belt. So it, it should be right. It was negative two. Let's just look at this thing here quick. So total conveyor change is going to get set to negative two. And then change that. Then we go if the x value is greater than or equal to force. We set the vector to zero. We don't want to do that, right? We want it to be that, right? So we don't want it to be... What the fuck are you doing? Why is it going to zero? Am I just... Hold on, am I dumb? 
Like, do I not know what my own code is? Oh my god. How did I how did I mess this up? So I see. Because I forgot that I need the negatives in there too. Okay. So now if we hit this, it should work or I might have to flip the signs again depending upon how it decides to function. I think I have to flip the signs again. I'm just going to do that real quick. Hold on. Am I like losing my fucking mind or something and thinking that this should work? But it's not. Okay, here. Let me just. I'm gonna grab the code for the Do I have that line of code there? I don't think I do. God damn it. Okay. Right, because the other one doesn't have that. Alright, so I put this here and then I need to remove this one so it's like that yeah okay but I need to just switch this to IB because of course why would the conveyor belt change if you're not changing the freaking conveyor change oh my god <clears throat> okay so let's switch that back one more time Why are we not getting the conveyor change to happen? Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe because we're not changing the freaking value. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, it, it goes on. But I think it is because the... What I don't understand is this fucking code here... Why does this get set to zero and not force? Oh, because we're not right, because we don't want to change that. But shouldn't it? Movement vector. Total movement change. Bear change. Motherfuckers. Okay. Because we're not checking for the total conveyor change here. So we're doing total conveyor change there. But this one is just conveyor change. This is what happens when you have too many things that are named similarly. Because, like, of course this would always trigger. So, like, why would this happen? Right? Also, it does make sense now having these less than or equal to because that could go to negative two, for example, or negative four, I mean. So this one wants to be greater than. This one wants to be greater than. This one wants to be less than. Okay. So now, without further ado, the block should not let us push it onto the conveyor belt. It should be pushing back. Here we go. It's got negative two, which means we can push it. It doesn't want to. If we go this way, it'll go really fast. Cause us problems getting through it. There we go. Alright, so the inverse block now works for the conveyor belts. 
Okay. Gods. You know, I suppose while I'm messing around with conveyor belt thing, I should just take the uh, destroyer block and do it too. That'd probably be the best thing to do here. No, 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 because destroyer block is just going to destroy the conveyor belt. Right, that's why I didn't do that. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty dumb sometimes. All right, so... What we want to do... With this... Is check... First of all, we need to check if the player's colliding. So we need a, a private... Boolean called is colliding. If I decide to type out the whole thing, I don't know why I was like, I'm gonna hit tab because it'll it'll know exactly what I mean. And it's gonna default to false. We then want to do on collision enter 2D if collision dot game object dot tag equals layer. We want to set is colliding equals to true. We then want to take the same thing here. However, on collision exit 2D, if it's player, we want to set this equal to false. Okay. Now, how the hell do I do this? I need to make it like when you're pressing the direction that the block is. Okay, so first we want to check if is colliding equals true. Right? We want to be able to do something in here. But we need to get the difference between the player and the block's transformation, right? So if the player is, let's say the conveyor belt, right? Hold on, it'll load. Okay, so if the player is the conveyor belt and we're pushing up against here, it's X value is negative 4.8 and this one is 6. So if we were to take the player value honestly what I should do. Yeah yeah so um so if we take the the player minus the inverse block Y position, that would be negative four minus negative six, which that's not how it would figure that. How do I do a negative here? Go four and then negative. Look how these buttons do. Hmm. Ah, right, negative four minus six negative equals two. Right, so if it's to the right it should be positive value, but if it's to the left, so this one is four, or yeah, that one's four and that one's six, for example, we would then take um it'd be six negative minus four negative equals negative two. Right? But it would still be negative. So yeah. <clears throat> um, oh, I just realized something. My uh, stuff to do notepad wasn't open. So basically, we're looking at if it's on the right value is 
negative. If it's on the left, value is positive. Let's make those values line up. If it's up, value is question marks. I don't know why I copied that since we have to do this anyway. Okay, we value that. Let's figure that out as well, just real quick before we do anything else. So if this one is down below, we are at negative. Let's just say we're at zero. That'd be probably easiest. The conveyor belt is at one. One minus zero is gonna be one. So our up is gonna be positive. And our down is gonna be negative because if we go uh, negative one minus zero, it's gonna be negative one. Even if it's like negative two minus one, that's still gonna be uh, negative, right? Okay, that's how we're gonna figure out where the player is pushing from, okay? With these values, excellent. Now, we need to figure that out. So we want to take a float, we're gonna call it direction, equals and what we have to do up here i think is we need to go player that will work a little oh, i think i got the player on here i was thinking i would just in the awake assign the player but the player spawns in after the lever sometimes so that would not work or else we're just gonna have to do it down here so we're gonna have to do game object player equals game object now find game object with tag player go and then we can do i don't want that to be a capital p we can do player dot transform dot position minus the um this dot transform dot position i think i need this dot game object game this dot game object dot transform dot position, right? We did vector three. Vector three equals there. Okay. Now we have it. All right. So that'll give us a XYZ coordinate thing. Okay. And how do I do it now? I guess before I do that, I also need to check. Hmm. With Twiki. I need to check what button. I need to make sure the character is pressing a button. Right? So, can I just, no, I can't just be like negative one and be like, we're gonna do that. Da -da. <laughs> no, wouldn't work. Um, Your drag. I don't understand what that means. I understand what that means. You see that fast. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. This might be a bit of a pickle. So, usually, if you're pushing a block, you would just be going in like one direction, right? So. First, if. And then I need to check my GM script. We're gonna check if player.keydown equals D or A. I'm just gonna copy this so I don't have to keep backspacing that all the time. Actually, you know what? Let's copy all of this including the or and the space 
So I can just do that and that. So we have a kind of better W A and then S and then D back here. So we're checking to see if they're pressing any of the movement keys. That's what we want to check, right? If any of the movement keys are being pressed, we need to do this. So we then get the direction, and then we need to check what direction we are in. So how do I do that? Um, this might be a bit complicated. So we need to, t so we, we have the direction, right? Um, we just check if dir dot x is greater than dir dot y. Which means if they are more to the left than they are above, right? God, I think that works. Because if you're above them, the x value will... No. Okay, so right now we are at this. So yeah, if we're below, or up or down, the uh, the x value stays the same, right? So I'm just thinking, I think I need like four statements here. So if the x value is greater than the y value, which honestly it just could be the fucking, yeah, hold on. Good night. Hold on. Let me open up a new script. I think I used something similar in one of my other things here. I just don't know which one it is. Let me open up a few of these. Okay. That one maybe. Mouse look. Did that have no the enemy? I think the enemy was just health, right? Yes. With the gun, it was just firing, right? I didn't have any like distance. Oh, I did have distance. Right. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find like a direction, right? You know what, let me just search real quick. I'm just gonna Google it and see if there is a like direction. So unity get direction to object. How do you calculate direction between two objects? Let's see. Let's see your camera's point A and your point is point B. Vector three A B. Origin, direction, normalize. Okay. Close all this stuff. Rather than doing this, well, I guess I do need that.
figuring out something you're not sure how to do is always. Let's see. We want. Let, let, let's just get rid of this real quick. We want to do vector three direction equals player transform. Just player transform dot position. Minus transform dot game object dot position. Which is what I had. Why are you, uh, right, not Okay. So we grab that and then we want to take Maybe I just want to do a debug quick here. So let's take direction dot normalize. That's what we need to do. And then let's do debug dot log um, direction equals space plus direction. Let's see what that does for us. I'm going to move the conveyor belt away here. Let's hit play. So right now, that's the direction we're getting. That's only happening when I'm pressing the key the first time, I see. Okay, let's try... What does direction dot magnitude do? What does this do? Returns the length of the vector. Okay, that's not what I want. What does normalize do? Doesn't say. Of course it doesn't say. What would it say? What would you normalize here? Our hard plus cannot be top of string and void. What if I do this? Dot log. Can I that? No, why is that? Why does that return void? What? I guess it doesn't return anything. Let me copy this. Paste it there. I just want to see what happens to the direction before and after I get normalized. Just to kind of see what we're doing. Also, um, hit key. Is there like held or hold? Let's let's check down here. Input dot get key turn while I hold down the key identify the key. Okay, so just get key is what I want. Get key down is just a press. 
Hit key. Hit key. Hit key. There we go. That was it. Save. Let's see what we get. Okay. So, start with from the left. So we get that, which I don't really understand what normalize is doing. Since this one would be a uh, yeah, this one would be before it gets normalized. And this one would get after it gets normalized. So I just do not understand. But at least it's in like a uh, a value representing. something. Okay, so let's grab our little notepad here. We'll look at our lovely little vector thing. So if I'm on the left, let's put on in front of these. The value is on left, negative, positive, zero. This is the vector. Also, I put a positive here for some reason. It should be negative positive zero. Okay. Now let's test from the top. So I click here. From the top, it is still negative positive zero. Hold on. Okay. Uh, bye, destroyer block. It's crazy. So let's see. I'm going to have to use like ranges for them, aren't I? Okay. So when I'm below it, the range seems to be. Between negative one, positive one, and like Jesus Christ. Okay, so this would be from negative one to like zero, zero, two, one, comma. What was the highest value we saw here? I think it was like 17? Like 0, 17? I guess if I just do like less than 1, 0, we can try that. Now if we start up here, we move around a couple of values. Okay. So we don't switch from negative to positive, it looks like. At least not a whole lot. We get from Basically, we want, oops, we get from like one, one to 50 basically on the right side. So we have 0 0.5 comma point. Eight zero two. There's probably such an easy way to do this somewhere out in the like void, and I'm just like, I'm, I guess we'll just figure all this out using numbers like this. And then uh, this one looks like it goes. 
from 0.5 to 0 0.8 to 1.30. So I think that's the range for when we're on the right. And when we're above it, it goes... Oops, I'm using the WASD. Not, I'm using the arrow keys there is what I was doing. Okay, so we start at a... We're on the top. We have a negative 0 0.27 to 0 0.900. Two over here to zero point two eight and then like one basically and then zero. However, we also had a one point Four or seven there? I do not understand what this is at all, man. Oh, god damn it, because I'm looking at it like. I'm still looking at the debug with both of these freaking options. We just want normalized. I was like, why are these numbers so freaking like weird? Okay, let's, let's try this again. A waste of time. I knew this block was going to be like pain in the ass. I didn't really think how much. Okay, so we're above. Let's erase what I currently had. We're at negative 0 0.29, like 0 0.9602. And if we go over this way, I don't, I don't get it. So this can go up to one. So, 0. Point, like, 0. 0.29, 0. 0.960. Okay, so it looks like we go that range. Okay. Let's start from this one. So if we're on the right, I'm just going to erase the stuff that I have here. Okay. From the right, we start at 0 0.56, 0 0.83, 0, 2, those values basically switch, I guess. Okay. Next we have, if we're below it, 1, 0 0.020, 0, 2. Over here, we have negative 1. 0 0.030. 0. Okay, and then on the right side, I'll show you guys what I'm typing here on the off screen in just a moment. So 0 0.9, negative 0 0.90, 0 0.430, 0, 2, up here, which is negative 0 0.54. And then 0 0.840. 0. Okay. So, from this information, these are the values I got. So, we can determine if we're left or up by using 
like figuring out what Y is. Or can we? Ugh. How would I even begin to like search for which direction I'm in? And the reason I couldn't just do like, oh, if they're if they're pressing D, um, then obviously we are to the left. It would not work because they could be pressing D and S or D and W and be like moving up and down while pressing this thing to the left, right? So that just would not work. Um, and then there's also values between these as well, which is what's throwing me off. Um, So, maybe I could do, like, if x is between these two values, between those two values, between those two values, between those two values, and that would be how I figure it out. But the thing with that one is, if the values are 1, like negative 1 and 1, all of these values are between those. I just need to type something out. So let's just let's just do this. Okay. So if else if else if else. Okay. So let's first say if zero point five is less than or equal to um zero dot x and it is less than or equal to 0.85f. What is this? Here. Okay, we'll just remove the equals then. Wait, what, what do you mean? Operator less than cannot be applied to operands bool and. Do I have to do like a fucking and statement? I can't do it like that. Okay, whatever. And if dir x is less than or equal to that. So we want to check that, right? So if it's below this value, we should actually probably up this to. No. Let's leave that at 88. I guess we want to say debug.log on the, this would be right of the block. Okay. We're just going to kind of do this to determine where we're at and if our idea is correct. So next let's use our values. So we want to check negative 0 0.9 negative 0 0.9 is less than or equal to dir dot x and dir dot x is less than 
or equal to negative 0.55f. Well, no, it should be 5, 4. Let's just do 5 there. I don't know if it matters if it's float or not, but I'm just going to do it. And then, those are both positive values. Those are both negative values. So if we have 0. Point negative, sorry, negative 0. 0.29, which, let's just make this 0 0.30. And the reason I didn't make this one up here uh, 0 point... Actually, wait, I could, couldn't I? I could just make this 90. Make this 90. I got 50. Get some nice round numbers here. I got 90. Okay. So negative 30f is less than or equal to error dot x. We're not going to worry about the y right now. We're going to see if I can do it with just the x values. And der dot x is less than or equal to 0 0.30f. That's the range that covers, which, yes, OK. That was, we'll do that. So that was the right one. Then we had the left one and then we have the up value and then the down value i know on the up and up on the down of the block doesn't make sense but whatever okay so let's see if i got this correct or if everything's fine so push we are on the left of the block okay on the upper of the block. It gets a little bit sketchy when we uh, start pushing from the corners. We are on the down of the block. Right in the middle, we're on the right of the block now, it says. But now we're on the right of the block. Oof. So right here, it's telling us that we're on the we're on the down or the right one. It said we're on the right somewhere here, didn't it? Right there. Which we're not. That's unfortunate. I think is that the only value that it's causing that issue on, like in the middle. I don't care about like the size. I care about like most of the middle stuff. Yeah, so it is only the left, down. So it is just like the Where's that value at again? Oh, had it. Well, let's just close out of this. So on the down, we want to do another debug.log. Um, and then just do direction right there. So now we'll we'll push it from below again. I think I've spent like an hour on this inverse block already. It's fine. Okay, so pushing it here. So we're on the down. On the down, on the down, on the down. Is it not going to show me the right one now? I'm not on the right or something? Hmm? Little pattern. We're between one. I think it came up because the length of the thing changed, didn't it? Or am I just seeing shit? Maybe I'm just seeing shit. 
Oh, there we go. So... Wait, why is that? That was at 12, 15, 23. Okay. the right there we go wait why did that just right 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 because it, it wouldn't show up if it's God, so fucking stupid let me move the debug value here so down. i'm removing the other debugs So now we should only see the debug information for the right value when we're pushing down. So we'll be able to just see what the hell's showing up here. So is it only when I'm that far away? Oops. Oh, right there. So we were at 0.5. Okay. Which... Yeah, I suppose? That's rough. Because negative one to one is just such a huge gap, right? So, I think, because that's the only one we're having an issue on that I can see, what we would need to do here is in the right value check to eliminate any possible uh, chance that there is a down value, we would also want to check the Y value. So we need to do dear.y is greater than zero point zero one. No. It should be dear.y, by the way. Um if it's less than zero point one. Because if you look here, um, all the right values, they're between 0 0.5 and 0 0.83 for their x values, or for their y values. Meanwhile, down here for the down values, uh, they are all like way, way, way small numbers. So we don't even have to worry about those hitting ever. Right, so if we just do zero F, hit save, I can then test this out again. Um, debug.log. Fucked up. Call that. Okay. And so if this works, when I'm below it, I should never see the debug here. Let me clear this. I'm just going to push into a wall so I don't have to worry about it going anywhere else. Unless I'm like way out of this side, which it's not doing, so that's perfect. Although now it's not even hitting when I'm on the right, which it should right now. Oh wait, 
Oh, I fucked up. I, I did fuck up, but not in the way you think. So it should be, um... The Y value should not be less than. It should be greater than. That's my fault. I was, I was looking at the, uh... Other one. Ugh. Now it should work. Seriously, I hate this graph error. I wish there was a way to be like, hey, yeah, I, if you see this error, I don't want it. Like, ever. So just ignore that. Okay, so if it do go over there, like, I think, right, collide with it. You collide with it in here. Yeah, if we, if we go too far to the right, it is going to say, you fuck that, but whatever. Okay, so that's fine. Whatever, I don't care. So we have our, our basic values. There is going to be some touch and go here with this block. We'll see what happens. So now, now that we have that, we need to move the cube and the player velocity. Oh boy. So let me uh, select my player here and open up the player move script because we need to figure out how we're going to do this. So when we are moving, we are changing velocity, right? So I think what I want to do is make a public vector three called inverse change equals new vector three, uh, zero, 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 all that. And then with inverse change, rather than uh, doing this here, we're gonna go plus inverse change here as well. So that way we can have the inverse block manipulate the inverse change. And then that should uh, do some stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, when does his movable get kicked? So if this colliding is true, else if uh... how do I stop it? Because I want to be able to move it here with the the player, right? And obviously, if is movable is false, it's going to go to zero. Do I need to do anything? I think is movable only happens when it's on a conveyor belt. So maybe I can just ignore this. Like setting the velocity back to zero, right? So if I take, if we're going to the right, the velocity should be three, right? We want to do player dot get component player move dot inverse change plus or, 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 or equals um do new vector three and then we can do we need six zero zero i think oops gotta put a comma there so that should make the player move at a rate of six to the left no we wanted negative right there right because positive x would be going to the right this one makes it go to the left and then we also need to take the um, uh, rigid, rigid body 2D dot velocity, uh, equals new vector three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm messing up. Okay. 
Uh, we also want to do negative three here because the player moves at a rate of three, right? So that would be what the velocity would change to. Uh, so we basically just want to drag the block with us, right? I think that's how this is going to work. So next for the left, we basically just want to switch these around like that. And then for up, we want to change these from here. Let's see. Is up. I always forget like why up is positive or not. Give me a moment. Why up is indeed positive. Okay. So velocity for this is going to be negative six for the player. Right there. And then negative three for the block. And then just copy this and make that positive. And then I guess when we're no longer colliding, we want to set the player's inverse vector to zero. So we want to do uh right, we can just do a collision.gameobject.get component player move inverse change equals new vector zero 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 or I guess I could just do uh vector 3.0 so reset player and vector two zero let's do players inverse vector to zero and then we also want to do this one's um, velocity set to zero as well when we stop moving it. So we'll do that. Cool. I think that should work. It might be a little bit messy when it comes to conveyor belts, but let's just see if it works for now. It's probably not going to, but that's fine. This is gonna be the wonkiest like block ever. But we hit this and we go that way, okay. Oh god. It also just drags you along with it. Okay, so uh, I think we're opposite of what we need to be here. So let's just do this. I don't know how that worked. Okay. Oh, right, because that's if we're on the right of the block, which means we're pushing it left. Right, I, I'm, I'm dumb. Okay. I just renamed the uh, comments that I had, so it's now on right, on left, above block, and below block. That way I not confused later on. Okay, so now if we push this block, oh, ho, ho, that's so freaking crazy. Uh, it doesn't work for up movement though, and uh, I couldn't get away from the block either. Weird. Works for left and right at least. That's good. We'll check down. So if we're pushing it down. Okay, so down works. Uh, I can't get away now. Oh no. Oh god. This block is crazy. Alright, so if we're above the block, what did I do here? Oh, I just apparently didn't re remove the, uh, the negative from it. The block was moving, but yeah, okay. This is such a weird block. Oh my god. So now, if we push down, it goes up with us. If we go that way, it does that. That way, it does that. And if we go this way, it, it does that. Ugh. 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 Yeah, sometimes it uh, is a little wonky, but it's fine. Okay, so I think we, we have our inverse block now. Um, 
the player's just gonna have to get used to how it is because I'm not messing with this code anymore. Uh, we do want to test it on the conveyor belt though, so let's go ahead and try that. I'll just have to remember how to actually push it properly here. So we want to go bring it up, and then we need to come over here and push it this way, which it won't let us. That's fine. That's okay, I'm okay with that. It doesn't need to interact with conveyor belts. We'll just make sure it doesn't interact with conveyor belts. That's all we gotta do. Yeah. Although I guess I could... What I could do is take it from a side. What the fudge? Yeah, it like just messes with it completely. So no conveyor belts with the inverse blocks. Uh, it's probably a good idea to do that. So I think the inverse block is completed now. Thank God, no freaking pain in the ass. Okay. Um. Let's see. Where do I move the player at? Here. Okay. I might want to, in player move, now that I'm thinking about it, make a public void reset EOS. Like that. In which I do a uh, conveyor change. Uh, equals vector three dot zero and then grab that one as well how nice of it to suggest that to me and then inverse change equals vector three dot zero just kind of reset that just like a hard hard reset uh to prevent anything from possibly leaking over depending upon what we're doing so we want to do uh this and then dot get component player move dot reset pos go which i might actually want to do prior to that because if i don't reset the pos and we're still moving it could potentially switch the position that we're going um which could cause some issues right i guess uh -huh. And since we're going to be destroying the inverse block anyway, it doesn't matter. We don't have to reset anything. That's great. Okay. I think that's fine. <laughs> God. Um, real quick, just remembered. I made some muffins before I started streaming. Got them out of the oven. I let them to cool. Uh, and I've not had anything for breakfast. I'm going to go grab those real quick. One moment. Mission accomplished. Chocolate chip, if you're curious, because why would you have anything else? Well, actually, I just don't like anything else. I don't like blueberry muffins or anything else. And you could have, I guess, plain muffins that are just muffins with nothing in them. But at that point, why would you do that? There's like no reason to have a muffin if there's nothing inside the muffin, right? Oh. Okay. Um... I guess now we can work on the destroyer block, which should be <clears throat> should be easy. Knock on wood. Okay. Let's 
now. Sorry, I'm eating a muffin. Also, let's cross some of these things off. So we uh, we imported our music. Um, set music. We imported our sound effects. Perfect. Actually, you know what? And set effects to lever and pressure plate. Okay. We added our attack tower and our projectile. That one's good. We added the pull blocks. Those are done. Excelente. Okay. All right. Sorry, it's hard to talk and eat at the same time. So uh, bear with me for a couple minutes. Let me explain this now. So the only thing we have to do is check for a collision, just like with a projectile. But we have a longer list of things to check. So we want to go switch. And do object. Case. Break. So we're gonna have, not the player, because the player doesn't matter. We're gonna have the movable block, pressure plate, lever, hit fall, uh, attack tower, projectile. I guess projectile would kill it anyway, so we don't need any redundancy there, because it would cause errors. Um, portals. Doors. I'm just moving this aside here for a second. <clears throat> prefabs. What prefabs we got? Uh, the inverse lock, of course. So. And conveyor belt. Okay, so. I'm gonna off screen do this. All representing this, just for the names anyway. We have the attack tower. We have a conveyor belt. We have the mobile block. We have the lever. We have a movable block. We have a pit fall. We have a pressure plate. We have the enemy. Uh, we have the inverse block. And of course, we have a case where a destroyer block hits another destroyer block, which is going to be a destroyer block. And then we need the portals here. Doesn't matter which one we hit, it's just going to uh, destroy both. Uh... Yes. Yes, yes, it's going to destroy both. Why? I'll show you in a second. Okay. I do believe that's everything that can be... Oh, we need a door, right? So, uh, case... Door... Break. Okay. So we have these gates, too. I guess I can call them a gate rather than door. Gate, okay. That is everything currently in the prefabs that we have here. All right, cool. So I'm gonna hit save. Although, if I do destroy a mobile blocks, you know what? Immobile blocks cannot be killed, we're gonna say. 
because uh, I don't want to have to reset them. That's annoying. Anything else that would be annoying to reset if it gets destroyed? You know what? Conveyor belts? Screw it. No conveyor belts can be destroyed. Okay. Eating a muffin again. By the way, one thing that really sucks about that graph error is if I were to open up my character here, go to animator, none of the stuff shows up. So, uh, you can't edit animations, at least the animation script stuff. When uh, that error is there. Middle finger to that error. Basically have to restart Unity. Okay. Gates are fine. Everything else is fine, I think. Okay, perfect. So, that's what we'll have. Um, so, in the level reset. I'm just thinking here for a second. Anything we need to add? Let's add a reset for portals as well. And also a reset for attack towers. And simply put, for those, we're just going to do a if dot count is greater than zero and also here if uh, portals dot count is greater than zero because we don't want to do anything if you know, there's none right so reset attack towers reset portals and we're just going to do a for each. Uh, game object G in attack towers. G dot set active true. Really the only time an attack tower is going to need to be reset is if it gets destroyed. And when we destroy it, I'm just going to set them to not be active anymore. Because that way I don't have to like set a spawn point for it and it'll be annoying, right? So we're going to do the same thing for this, for the portals, because the portals aren't going to be movable. Um, they're just going to be static locations, so if we do destroy one, we're going to just set it inactive. That'll be the easiest thing. So the destroyer block or attack tower, we want to do collision.gameobject.setActive false and then this dot game object destroy we destroy the uh 
the block. And I'm gonna actually just put that down here for all of them before I forget. Because for each of these, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Okay. So for the portal, so we want to, uh, I think I'm gonna copy this and then levers we're gonna go ahead and set inactive. Pitfalls will be just set to inactive, pressure plates inactive, enemies inactive. Um, the inverse blocks will destroy, destroyer blocks will destroy, portal we're gonna set inactive, gates we're gonna set inactive. So then we're going to go destroy collision dot game object for that because the inverse blocks are just going to be respawned. Same with destroyer blocks and same with the movable blocks. So it's the only thing we care about um, for that. Right. Which means in the ones that are getting set inactive, I need to change their reset. Uh, Things. So let's throw this over here and let's open up the lever script because that needs to be set to active again. Well, actually, that doesn't matter. It just has to work in the right, just, just in the reset level script. So for each attack tower. Um, for each projectile, we're just going to destroy the projectiles. This is for loose items and their spawns. Those just get instantiated. Resetting enemy, we want to do... Enemy.setActive equals true. I'm just going to copy that setActive equals true, because we're going to probably use that a couple of times. Levers, for each lever, we want to do G.setActive equals... Yeah, set active equals true. In fact, I'm probably just going to copy G set active equals true. So we're probably needing to just copy that everywhere. And then these are for movable blocks, which don't really matter. I think that's everything, right? So the attack towers, which we do here, portals we do here. We got the pitfall, the pressure plate, right? Pitfall and pressure plate were up here. Pressure plate pitfall. We had the enemy, which we set to active down here. We have the inverse block, which just gets destroyed and respawned. Portal and the gate. We did not have a gate thing here, so let's go ahead and open up that. Hmm. Actually. No. Gates. Okay. So copy this. Paste that. As long as gates is greater than or equal to that. We want to do breach G and gates. There we go. I, I was wondering because the, the gates are usually tied to a pressure plate or a um, lever and hitting the reset on a lever would also enable it, I think. But Perhaps I want to have an area that just does not have a, uh, a lever or a pressure plate associated with the gate, so you have to use a destroyer thing. We'll do that. So I think that's what we want to do. Now I just need to check exactly how these move. Let me just check to see the dynamic, yeah, 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 continuous, okay. I need to see why the destroyer block would be sliding like that. I think it's because in the other ones, like the movable block and whatnot, we have a update. So we, we just do update and we'll just do, uh, we need to get a rigid body. So 
rigid body to the RB. We're gonna do that, and then on awake, we're gonna do rigid body get rigid body, and then on update, we're gonna do RB not velocity vector zero. I guess. Because I think the other ones, if they're not being moved by a conveyor belt, the velocity is telling it to be zero. So if we go like this, yeah, see, it's, it's constantly being like, I want to not move. I want to not move. I want to not move. God, it, it's so weird walking over the portals. God, maybe I should make them smaller. Yeah, right now they're just way too huge, I think, in comparison to everything else. I could even just remove the floaty like things and just have the uh, items spawn with just a little like portal in the ground. But all that work I made, I put into making those, which took like five minutes, by the way. I don't want you to think that it took me a huge amount of time to make these. It, it literally took me five minutes using the uh, the paint. <sighs> Is that what I want to do? I mean, they're just way too big right now. Like, if anything, they should just be about like this size, like a circle right here. Okay? They shouldn't be a huge portal. I really went overkill with them. But I think having them like bobbing up and down is really nice. It was fun. Anyway, yeah, that's what we needed to do is have that there. But I think I'm gonna add a little bit more logic. So uh, I'm gonna add a switch here that says case player as a tag. And we're gonna add a private bool is colliding equals false and then what you're gonna do is colliding equals true here break so that way it's not gonna always set rigid body equal to zero is colliding uh equals false do you want to do that There we go. So otherwise, we're not going to do anything in the update function because it would just be wasted performance and stuff like that. So we also need to add a on uh, collision exit 2D. So we want to check if it is the player. So if uh, collision dot game object dot tag equals player, we want to set is colliding equals false okay so that should make it a little bit neater um, at least performance wise which this game isn't going to be too computer heavy i don't imagine but you never know now if we push this block it moves a lot smoother now so i think the reason the other blocks felt heavy was because they were they're like constantly being uh stopped and moving which is crazy should I maybe change that here because we are always setting velocity equal to zero but I guess we would need to for this for the conveyor belt to work also I could use the destroyer block on conveyor belts now but Nah, we're gonna say the conveyor belt's too dense to uh, do that. Incidentally, I'm just really curious. What happens if I like set the mass of this to like 10? Do I still just put it the same? It, it takes a moment to start, but then it like, gets going. I was set it to like, a thousand. Oh gods, yeah. It really takes time to get up to speed. Like it starts off really slow. 
But once you start moving it, it, it speeds up a little bit. What if I just set it to 100, I wonder? Like... Nice. I guess it'll go pretty fast after that. Maybe I make it, like, start off a little slow. Oh, I could remove the velocity thing. Hold on. Let's try something out. What if I remove this? Comment that out. So I think it slows itself down if it has some sort of mass. If we set it to have a hundred mass. Go ahead and click on it again here. If I start moving it, it used to just kind of slide by itself, right? But will it stop? Or no, it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. What is linear drag? A drag coefficient. What if I set that to like 10? Because drag to me means like something like a friction that would like stop it from being moved, right? A little bit too high. Let's set that to one, I guess. We push it and then it starts to go to a stop. Right, okay. So let's set the mass to 10. See what happens then. So I can push it and then it just slowly comes to a stop. So I want it to kind of be like a volatile sort of thing where it just kind of slides around a little bit. Well, let's add a little more drag. It, it slides too much. I want it to slide a little, but not a lot. Let's try three. The slightest touch just kind of sends it like that. Let's try five linear drag. There we go. I think that looks good. That way it's not like skirting across the entire thing. I could even try four. I don't know what angular drag is. Like, what's the difference? What if I do have it at one mass? Hmm. Nothing really. Let's just find a nice sweet spot for it here. So, I don't want it to move too fast when you're pushing it. I want you to have, like, it, it, it feels hefty, right? You have, like, consequences that are associated with the box. Let's try mass five, then. Yeah, so, that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna go five mass, four drag. Five mass, four drag, we'll do that. It's gonna be a little weird that it's the only box that has uh, angular drag, but I think that's fine. It's, uh, it's a little volatile, it's crazy, it likes to move on its own, it has a mind of its own kind of thing, you know? All right, and with that, I think the destroyer block is done, so let's add that to the prefab. Blop. And get rid of the conveyor belt as well. So, I'm going to take portal A, portal B, and before we do anything, maybe, yeah, we go into paint and edit these. So let's go boop, 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 boop. Meh. All right. All right, so how do I want to do this? Well, because they're all different levels and stuff. So if I just like grab that, slide it down here, Like that. 
That can save a little bit, but not much. You know what? I think I might just uh, get rid of all of that. Get rid of all of it. Screw it. Why not? And then we'll just grab this thing. And we want brush scale three. Let's grab a circle thing. And let's just go like that. Let's turn that onto there so it's a nice crisp. There. Okay. I think that would be centered now, right? Okay, so let's put that there for right now. Let's go to image, canvas size, and rather than the height being that, let's set it to 64. Okay. What about a height of 32? How does that look? It's like that. Okay. So what I could do is I could remove the bottom thing and just have a circle that's like kind of bobbing up and down. I think I might do that, to be honest. So let's grab all this, delete it. Let's make a, uh, a nice little circle here, but we don't want to make that. No, because that doesn't leave us any room to bob, right? We have that little piece that sticks out on the side there. Why Why does it do that? Can I have you not do that, sir? Thank you. Okay. Need a little more room to bob up and down, though. Something like that, I think. This is a 24 by 24 size, so what is 32 minus 24 is 8. Okay, so 4 on each side would do it, so let's go 1, 2, 3, 4. This should be in the center. That should be centered now, right? No. What? Where's 32 by 32? That's to be 32 by 32 right here. Better idea. Canvas size. We'll just do it like this. That looks good right there. Okay. A little bit off center, but that's fine. It gives us some time to put some bobbing in. So that will work. All right, now let's go back to the image canvas size. Width is, I think it was 196 before. No, 128, right? Okay, let's get rid of that nonsense. All right, and this is gonna be the blue one. So I think we took this color and we made it a little bit transparent. Not that the transparency showed up, by the way, it's just how it was. All right. There's 32 by 32, there it is, right there. Okay, so copy this. We're gonna go, wow. How do I know when, when, when we're 32 in though? That's the question, ain't it? Hold on. Let's make a uh, square around this real quick. It needs to be one pixel. That we know that that is 32 by 32. Right there. Okay. Now we have our square layout. We know exactly where we're at. So I can copy this, paste it. Now each border should be too thick. Perfect. 
Okay. <clears throat> now I can just select the black boxes and hit delete to get rid of them. So let's select this second one. We're gonna cut it and paste it and go one, two. We grab this, cut, paste, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna grab this one and go one, two. So we have a nice little bob kind of thing going on here. So let's go ahead and copy this. Just delete all that. We're gonna make this canvas resize the height of 32. And then we're going to grab a nice little orange, a little transparent C to it. Not that color though, gods. Ugh. Maybe I just have to get rid of all this real quick. Maybe the color, yeah, having the blue behind it was, was throwing it off, I think, was the issue there. So now we have our nice little portals. I don't think, again, the transparency matters, but why not? We'll just hit save on all of these to get them there. Go in our assets. We're gonna have to delete these, unfortunately. And then we'll just remake them real quick. Ah. Okay, and we'll cut them up. Perfection. All right, and then with our portal A, we can add our sprite here. Go to our animation. Do this doing nothing because we can't animate what it doesn't have. So we're going to delete these nodes. Grab hold of these. Put them here. If I hit play now, we can see it bobbing up and down. Perfect. Let me just check here real quick. Okay. I could just use a circle collider for this now, but... What past that now? Oops. That'll be our, our new portal area. We have our, our animation of it bobbing up and down. Which honestly, I should make the uh, a little bit bigger like this then, right? Perfect. Okay. There we go. Let's do portal B. So let's grab our initial sprite. If I could properly drag things, I guess. Animation, delete those. Copy these over here, hit play. Make sure it's bottom. It's bottom. Okay. And then let's take this thing and get it adjusted nicely. Let's hit play and see if it hits the things here. A little bit higher on the middle one, I think. Perfect. All right, good enough. Good enough anyway. All right, now we have the portals finished again. And this time, if we compare them to the size of a block, well, uh, a movable block, it's not that bad, right? It doesn't make sense that something Bigger can go into them, but it doesn't need to make sense because it's magic. It's kind of like how in games you have the, uh, or in novels and stuff like that, you have like a, a magic bag that has like a small opening and yet people pull out like uh, weapons and stuff from it, right? It doesn't make no damn sense. So that'll be our new little thingy thing there. Let me readjust some windows over here. Real quick, Mike. 
Okay. Okay. Now, no, 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 no. We just need to make the portals work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take portal A and make B a little. Uh, Jesus, a uh, child of it, right? So portal B. Let's rename these things now since they're going to be part of the same thing. Portal A, the location. Okay. Let's come over here. I'm going to get rid of this update, and we might as well get rid of the collision stuff, too. We're going to check for that in this. I will say it was a lot of code there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't actually use the rigid body here anymore, so we can get rid of that. We don't stop the velocity of it. I, uh... I should actually test that now that I think about it. I just want to make sure that it uh, doesn't cause no issues. Oh, that's an asset, not a uh, prefab. My bad. There we go. I was like, uh, did I save the wrong thing or something? But now it should still work. Excellent, it does. Finger guns! Cool. So. 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 Let's open up our little thing here. Whoop. Destroyer block. Created. Finished. Now then. Our portals. First of all, let's go ahead and close the destroyable block. Just close that. All right, portal, portal, portal. So we need to make a serialized field called game object portal B. We need to make a serialized field called uh, game object called portal A TP location. We'll grab the same thing for Portal B, um, Portal B. And then we're gonna make a serialized field for a mm -mm, Boolean called is Portal A. That way we can tell if it's Portal A or B or not, very simply. All right, so. What we need to do here is simply on trigger enter 2D. And speaking of, um, I want to make sure these are set to trigger. They are perfect. Okay. So. What we want to do is, for anything that touches the portal, we want to send it through. Actually, thinking about it, if this is a trigger, I won't be able to... Um, yeah. <clears throat> if they're set to triggers, it means that the destroyer block wouldn't be able to destroy them. But I want it to be able to do so. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I want the destroyer block to be able to go through portals. Nah. Nah. That'd be too easy. All right, so now these are actual collision things. The destroyer block can actually hit them because if it's trigger, the destroyer cannot destroy them, right? Okay. So, basically anything that collides with this 
we need to first check if collision.gameObject.tag equals destroyer block, or I guess we want to search does not equal destroyer block. If it is a destroyer block, we don't want to do anything. You just want to let it get destroyed. Otherwise, if it is, we want to check if is portal A. I don't want to do an else here. Okay, so if the object is, uh, if the portal is portal A, we want to send the object to portal A teleport location. So what we do is we do collision dot game object dot transform dot position equals um, portal a location dot transform dot position. If it's B, we do the same exact thing, except we just change this to be portal B. That should very simply what we want to do. Okay, very simple for the portals at least should be and basically what we want to do is have portal a be over here portal b will be over here portal a's spawn location will be over near b for example and portal b's spawn location will be over near portal a example right so now if we hit play and i attempt to go through the portal Oh god, I was really close to that. It should not let me go in, but I'm colliding with it. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> it helps if you assign values to your location. So A, B is portal A. You need portal B in there. And for portal B, well, we are portal B. And then portal A, B, portal B is not locked, don't do whatever. Now I'm actually use the same script for both of them. Um, let's actually move the spawn point a little bit so I'm not spawning directly on top of the portal. Clear that out and hit play. So now if I touch the portal, I should get sent over to here. And we can just kind of keep going like this. And it's going in the portals. Yeah. Now then, that we've done that, let's get a couple other things to test with. Let's get our destroyer block here. Go ahead and just move it up. Now let's get a, a couple of movable blocks as well. But I want to see what happens when you put multiple blocks inside of it. If they get stacked, if they get moved, or, or what happens, right? So. We'll start with the movable blocks. That one gets spawned there, that one gets spawned there, and if I go in, I, I don't necessarily go on top of it. So anyway, I could have just gone back to the portal, I don't know, I'm walking all the way over here. We use the destroyer, and it destroyed... Nothing. It gave us an error. It did not give us an error. It, uh... Why didn't it destroy the portal? Destroyer block, you have some explaining to do. So it should have sent this to be false. <clears throat> Incidentally, uh, one thing that I did notice the level reset for the portals we need to do g.get component portal script dot portal b dot set active equals true and we need to do a public thing here Because sometimes portal B could be the one that gets destroyed. And uh, we want them to be destroyed separately. So 
Did I not? Yeah, I did not. Set the tag to be portal. That's why. That's the only reason why. So we need to create a tag called portal. Also a tag called lever. A tag called gate. A tag called pressure plate. Or else we're not going to be able to destroy anything. Um, we have the inverse block. We have a pitfall one. We do not. So pitfall. And we have... Do we have an attack tower? No. So attack tower. Okay. Okay. So now I should add all those. We got... Portal, portal, and then we need to go to our prefabs and set their things here. These are gates. Um, destroyer block is set up, immobile block, inverse block is set, lever needs to be set. Why did that save, but the other ones did not? Pretty sus, my friend. It fall, it fall, save. Pressure plate gets set to be a pressure plate. The projectiles are already set, the enemy is set, and the player is set, perfect. So now I should be able to push it in and the portal will get destroyed, perfect. And fuck off graph. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove these movable blocks. I don't need them there. Let's go ahead and just move this bad boy. Boop. Destroys both of the portals. Which, really, it'd be nice if you'd only destroy one of them. But, since they're linked like that, that's what we're going to have to do. So I really don't want to have to go through and do A and B portals and link them all up like that. I just want to have them like oh, like this so yeah I, I guess i could make like an empty prefab and put a portal a and b in that so they could be stored separately oh. yeah it could Let's, um, let's create empty called portal and move this one up here. Then that way they're, they're separate. And then, uh, yeah, we have portal A, portal B. Do I even need portal B? Now that I think about it, I, I don't know why I was like, yeah, I do. Because I need to manipulate it. Which means I just need another one of these. Portal A. If this is the way we turn them on and off. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. Astronaut Atlas, hello, welcome to the stream. Okay. I'm gonna copy these over here. This portal A is not portal A. I'm doing good, how are you doing? Just getting some extra items here. Set up into the game here. So let's see. So now with the reset level script, rather than just searching for the portal uh, G, we need to do uh, children, right? Hmm. What's the game about? It's just, it's just a simple puzzle game where you, uh, you play as a, a slime character right here, and you solve puzzles that a, a, like, slime researcher has, uh, put you through, and you, you go through his experiments to basically learn stuff, yeah, so. That's the, that's the game that we're making. 
fight. So how am I going to do this? Um, I suppose I could do g dot get child. How do I get the child of a hero thing? I've made a quite a few levels. Yeah, I have uh, eight levels done right here. We open them up and kind of show you what they look like here. This one is like a messy conveyor belt level. This one is uh, got some like pitfalls where if you fall into them, you get reset to the beginning of the level. And if you push these blocks, <clears throat> if you push these yellow blocks into them, they kind of seal it off so you can go over them. And then this one, we just like have these yellow blocks you can move, the red blocks you can't, you gotta get to the exit, stuff like that. Simple so far, it's it harder as you go along. No, okay. Uh, so, which item did I have that was, like, get child? Was it pitfall? No, because I just specified those there. I think there, I swear there was an item that I was, like, we're just going to use the child of this item. And... Oh, it was level. Right. The, uh... Level script. So right now I'm not designing a level. I'm just getting these, uh... These portals and the, uh... New destroyer blocks that I created to work. So, right now I'm just getting those to work. After that I can design levels. And go from there. I just wanted to add some extra things rather than just a couple of blocks that I had before. So today I've been mainly focusing on adding the various blocks and new items to the game. I think in level script I reference a child here, right? No? Was it finished level script? I remember I did it somewhere to reference the spawn point. Where did I do it at? No, it's not there. Is it the level reset script, maybe? Man, by now I could have just looked it up and... Nah. What does the destroyer do? The destroyer just destroys any block it's pushed into, with some exceptions. So... Yeah... Am I like... Wait, is it... Hold on. Transform dot... Get child... Zero dot game object? Right, that's what it is. It's the transform is what it is. Thanks for the follow, astronaut. Yeah, with, with the... It'll be up on Steam. I'm not sure how much I'll price it for. Um, I'm planning right now 50 levels, and it's day six and I've made eight, so I could potentially have it done at the end of the month. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. The more complicated the levels get, the longer it'll take me to make them, of course. But, uh, and if there's anything else that I want to add, or if I want to make more levels, who knows, so... Tentative end of month, potentially, but I don't know. It'll depend. But then we want to get child one here, right? And I think that is what will reset the level. So, 
If I push the destroyer block now, that portal gets destroyed. And if I hit escape and do a restart level, okay, it did not do that. Is it because... Mm. It might be because it can't see that in order to set it to true. Right? Well, I guess I could just add the portal script here. And then we just take... Well, hold on, I have to close out of this first. We have the portal script here. We take the A, and we take the B. It doesn't matter the rest of the stuff there. But then I can just say, get component um, portal script dot portal a dot set active equals true. And I'll just copy that down and place that line. We have it be portal B. That way it should work. That way the uh, variables are set in stone and they're not variables. You learn to type pretty fast when you're, when you're doing stuff. It can be also a blessing and a curse though, because uh, sometimes you'll make typos quite frequently. Which I've done in various other games that I've made that uh, made me had to go back and correct text lines. Once again, it did not restart. Why? Why? I'm not destroying the portal, right? I'm just setting it to be inactive. Oh. Right, 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 right. It needs to be over here. That way I can click reset level and it resets because that's why it knows. Right, okay. That was my fault. Cool, it works. All right. So destroyer block will destroy the portal. Portals you can go through. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and save the portals down here. I can delete that item. And let's just for the sake of things make sure that the destroyer block will destroy the things that I want it to destroy and not destroy the things that I don't want it to destroy. So we'll just get a couple of examples here for right now. Hit play. So it shouldn't destroy some of these. So it shouldn't destroy the immobile block. It should destroy the pressure plate, which it did not. It should destroy the gate, which it did, and it should not destroy the conveyor belt, which it did not. Perfect. It also doesn't move on the conveyor belt, which I should change, but that'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll add a conveyor belt movement here in a moment. What does this say? Variable change, pressure plays nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, right, because the pressure plate does not have a hitbox, it cannot be collided with. So that's the problem there. So what I can do instead is destroyer block, come here. I'm going to add another box collider around you. That is a trigger. No, because that wouldn't work either. That's fine. That's fine. We'll do in the pressure plate. Pressure plate script then. So let's open up pressure plate script. Let's see. We want to check on trigger collision. Let's check if collision dot game object 
dot tag equals destroyer block. We want to do this dot game object and destroy it. However, we also need to send a message to the destroyer block to destroy it. So public void destroy this destroy this dot game object. Damn, okay. Different weights from different blocks might be interesting for puzzle solving. True, it could be, but I, I think that'd just be messy for me. I just want it to be a little simple, you know? But anyway, to explain some of the stuff that I'm doing here right now, Astron, um, so the pressure plate, it has this, uh, well, all, all the objects have this, like, box thing around them. So if I open up the pressure plate here, do open this guy up, and we hit this thing here, you can kind of see that this has a, uh, a little neon green box. And that is called a, uh, a box collider. And using this checkbox, we make it have a, a trigger. So that means we can pass through it. However, if our object that passes over it, like our player, for example, has a similar box, and it has a no is trigger option here, which means it's gonna collide with things. Um, it then sends a trigger message, right? Yeah, it's like a hitbox, basically. Um, but some of them can be set to be like invisible or visible to the world. So ones that do not have trigger set up, you can like slam into them and collide them, right? Trigger means that they won't collide with things, but it can trigger events, right? So what the pressure plate does is it takes a trigger by if anything that has a collider passes through that little hitbox that it has, it goes into this script, which then is going to send uh, information that you put into here, basically. So we basically check to see what block this is, if it's a destroyer block, because then we want to destroy everything without doing anything. So we go ahead and take um, the collision object, which is that, dot game object, dot get component, and that's going to be destroyer block dot destroy this, basically. So what this code does is it takes the collision object that collided with the pressure plate hitbox, it takes the game object of that collision object, and the game object is just like a, it's like any of these things here that are like in the, uh, uh, in the field right now. So like all these little game objects. Um, and we want to get the component of that game object that is the destroyer block, which if we select the destroyer block, it's uh, looking for this script here that's attached to that game object. And then we want to call this line of code that is attached to that, which does this. So that's, that's what that does. Um, which means I can get rid of this pressure plate trigger. Like so. I think that's the only thing that's going to matter. So we'll remove that. Okay. So we know that this immovable block works. We know that the conveyor belt, well, it doesn't really work, but here there. Let's get the inverse block. Let's get a lever and we can test all these again. Okay, so we push this and those die. We push this and those die. We push this and those die. And I got an error from the pressure plate. But I think that's because it just didn't have anything assigned to it, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Although I could come here and make a, an else statement. And then just copy all this into it. That way, that only activates if <laughs> the object is not a destroyer block. Okay. And of course, we have the conveyor belt, which will not work yet for this object. 
let's go ahead and get out of here. We can go ahead and destroy these objects. Okay. Those, let's see. We need to test the pitfall. We already tested the portal. And we've tested the, I think we've tested the movable block. Let's just test it again. Then let's grab the enemy as well, and we'll just hide the enemy's cage. Boop. There we go. All right, let's try it again. So we push this one into here, and it, right, it also has a thing like that. Right. These two should work, though. Yep, excellent. Okay. Yeah, the pitfall is going to be one of those uh, annoying ones like the pressure plate, because it does not have a hitbox either. It has a trigger. Let's open this guy up. And then, of course, I closed the pressure plate, which I could have used to copy code. Okay. Copy this. Pressure plate is triggered. Balls. We want to let's do we'll just end our case here. Oops, not that. Yeah. This okay. I'll just paste that there that code and paste that code there. So it will take that, pass that into there, and do that. So that should work. Oh, actually, hello. I don't want to destroy this game object. I'm going to do this dot game object dot set active as false. I don't want to destroy the object, I want it to still be there. Right, okay, so if I test that now, it should work. The push of a block isn't uh, made out of wood. It, I, I don't really care about the material it's made out of, it's just a block. Just a yellow block. It could be made out of steel or iron or whatever, but that's really all there is to it. Now, question, if I push two destroyable blocks into each other, they should explode. Perfect. They don't explode, they just destroy each other. So let's go ahead and close these now. That should be all I need for. Yeah, the pitfall block, I don't need that one there either. Okay. Save. Perfect. Destroyer block is completed. Now we just have to do the conveyor belt to make the um, conveyor belt move the destroyer blocks. Okay. Which, of course, I, I closed the conveyor belt script again because I'm genius. So, actually, did I already do this? I did not. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the same code that we have for our movable block. It's gonna do the same exact thing. We're just gonna paste it down here. We're just gonna change the name of it. Destroyer block is gonna be DB. We need to change these names. Code of the destroyer block, I forgot. Okay, let me open up the destroyer block one more time. And then I also need to open up the movable block to see what it had exactly. Okay. 
Let's copy this stuff into the destroyer block. So that way it can do these things. But I I don't want this code here, I don't think. Hmm. I don't want this to happen all the time. Let's make a new boolean. Um, let's name it has moved, and we're going to call it false. We're going to set this to has moved equals true. And then it is movable if it goes to false. What we're going to do is check if has moved equals true. this and then do has moved equals false. So basically what that will do is instead of always triggering this, um, it'll skip this until it has moved and once it has moved it'll do that code. So we don't have to worry about it constantly stopping. And that should, should still allow us to move the So now let's grab the other code here for that and paste it down here. Okay, and then we just need to go through this again and rename this code. Oh, it's not destroyable, it's destroyer block, my bad. I'm just gonna copy and paste that code here and here. And then we need to change the name of these characters here. I'll have to make sure that I have them all typed in. To get rid of an E there. All right, so now let's save it, push it on the conveyor belt, and see if it moves. Because it should. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna cry. Okay, so we hit play. And here we go. Hmm. It does move. Okay. However, we have lost our pushable block it. It moves a lot harder now. Destroyer block. Is movable is always equal to true, right? I think I can fix this better. So instead of doing this, we just want to check if conveyor change does not equal vector three dot zero. Why does that give me an error? What, what's this? Does not exist in the current context. What do you mean? It's right there. Oh. Forgot a character. Because yes, is is movable is always going to be true. Which Yeah. Makes sense then. Is that all I need to do, maybe? 
Do I even need the has changed thing? I don't think I need has changed or is movable. Let's see what happens. Nice and slidey now. It still moves on conveyor belts. Noise. Okay. We got it. Congratulations, gentlemen. We got it. We got him. All right. So, real quick, I'm just going to close out all of these things we don't need anymore. And. <clears throat> Go ahead and cross off create portals from our finished list. So next we're gonna set up our sound effects and some music for the game, and then we can get to creating levels. But first I'm gonna go to the bathroom, get up and stretch, do all that good jazz. Feel free to do so as well. Get some drinks and that kind of stuff. Right back.
Alrighty, we're back. So, we want to add some music and sound effects to the game. We imported some at the beginning of the day. Let's go ahead and get rid of that for a second. And the things we want to add the sound effects and stuff to would be the pressure plate and the lever grips. And then, of course, the, the level itself needs to have music, so it's the main menu, but we'll get to those in a second. So, let's start with these. First of all, we need to make a serialized field <coughs> for an audio clip. We're going to call it sound effect. Like that. Then we need to make an audio source called... No, I'm just going to call it odd, A-U-D. And then when we use the lever, we want to make the sound effect. So what we'll do here is we'll do odd dot or odd equals uh, game object dot find game object with tag SFX dot get component audio source. That'll get us the um, audio source of the thing. And actually, I'm going to move that up to here. So it doesn't matter which side it's in. I'm going to have to do this once. That's going to get us the, the audio source thing. And then what we want to do is we want to do odd dot play one shot and SFX. And this will allow us to just play the sound when we use the lower. Easy as that. Pressure plate should be pretty similar. We're going to do a serialized field of an audio clip. We're going to name it SFX. You know what, honestly, let's, let's remove this. I don't need to create a variable and do all that nonsense. We can just do this all in one line. There we go. Let's go ahead and copy this. And we can just place this down. So if it's not a destroyer block, we want to trigger the sound effect whenever something enters the pressure plate. Right? That should be all we have to do for these. Let's go ahead and toss that to the side. I need to open up the music here so we can pause this. All right. Let's go to our prefabs. And I'm going to do, 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 throw out the lever and a pressure plate right there. And then we need to go into our lever here so we can edit the um, sound effect. These are the two sound effects that we have. What are we going to do? What's this one? I think the second one sounds more levery to me. Again, they're not the best sound effects. So I made them myself. So we're just going to take this, put it there, and hit save. And we're going to grab the pressure plate. And we're going to copy over the other sound effect to it. Hit save. Go back. Now, if I hit play and try to use them, whenever I interact with them, it should make the sound effect. As you can see, we can hear the sound effect happening. It's not changing the lever direction because there's no object assigned to it yet, so it is erroring out. Pressure plate. Same thing. Perfect. We are getting the sound effect to occur. So, next up, our level script. For this music there. So in the level script over here, 
we want to add a serialized field for an audio clip called music. We also want to do a audio source. Do I need this? I don't think I do. I think I can just do a, a one line thing like we had previously. So we want to first of all wait to awake. And we want to You know, I do need to check something. So we need to do game object dot find game object with tag uh, music dot get component uh, audio source How did I have that there? Okay, so I am going to actually name this one so I can save that variable. So now if we look at our audio source for the music, which is over here, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're not updating the music and whatnot if we don't have to. Because like I had mentioned previously, we're going to leave the music for levels 1 through 10. They're going to be the same. Same with levels 2 or not 2, uh, 11 through 20. They're going to be the same music, right? So we want to first check if odd dot now what is what is this called? It's called audio clip. So is it just clip? Clip dot name equals music dot name. We want to say do not equals because if it if it's the same name, then we uh, don't want to do anything. And also, let's add, let's add a debug here. So debug.log. And we want to grab two of these. One for music.name. And the other one for the audio clip.name. Just to make sure we're looking at the right components here. So that'll print out the name of what we're looking at. And if the audio clip name is not the same as the music name, we want to do audio.clip equals music. And then we want to do odd.play. So we, we update the music clip, and then we play it. So let's just throw in any old um, music we have here. So let's grab music. Let's just go, this one's called Bone Zone. Sure, why not? Let's do that. And if we hit play, it should start playing here. It gave us an error though. We're looking for audio clip dot name. Maybe because we did not have something in there before. Okay, so let me try this again. We'll let's throw in that and we'll hit play. And now see if we get something or if we get some error. Okay. Perfect. So we have the music in here now. So that works, and it is showing us the proper name and the music name, so we can easily check them out, make sure that they are uh, different. 
And that's all we need to do for our, our level script for the music here, but we do have to update all of the stuff there. Um, next, for the main menu script, let's add a, I already got it here for the main menu music, perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then we have the music here updating. Perfect, all right. Let's hit save. And let's sort out what music we want to have for what. Okay. I'm going to increase the volume a little. I'm just going to go through all of them here. Okay, let me hear the calm loop again. Okay, I think for at least level one through whatever, we're gonna use calm loop. Can I rename this? Rename it. I'm just going to call it World 1, so that way we can keep track of the ones that we've used and we've not used. So what should we use for the main menu music is the question. This one's kind of goofy. I think we use this for the main menu. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the main menu menu canvas and the audio clip is over here there we go there's the main menu music all right let's hit save and unload that scene there all right so we've added the music to levels nine and ten we also need to add the music to levels one through eight here let's go ahead and do that it should be simple just highlight them all and then we drag the world one music over to here for all of them and then if we look at all of them all of them should have the music did i also do the yeah okay wasn't sure if i did the uh text for the previous level all right cool that's all that done for now as we create the next levels and stuff i'll decide what music to use for them but it doesn't matter at the moment not at the moment I could, do we have these set up? I forgot. Okay, a pause menu button does do that. Fine, get rid of that. All right, let's get rid of the lever and the pressure plate, conveyor belt and the destroyer block. Open up our list of things to do. I can get rid of that and that. And now all we have left to do now is make more levels. That's all we need to do. All right, so now that we have gotten that out of the way, let's look at our previous level, which was conveyor belts that we just introduced. So we probably want to use conveyor belts in some way in the next level, at least. Otherwise, it'd be kind of weird to not 
use them after we just introduced them. So we said these platforms will make you need to think ahead because they move. Okay. So, 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 so. First of all, let's determine where we want our spawn and our end point to be. We also want to set the uh, default parent to be items. So anything we add will be added to that area. So click the tile map, click the tile palette. Hmm. We haven't used one of these yet. Let's use one of those for the exit. So it's over here. Ooh. Fancy. Okay. Now let's move the end level point. Boop, 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 boop. Turn on the uh, snap to grid thing here. Let's put the player up here. Let's just see where I spawn to be exact. It's not at the exact midpoint there. Right there. Okay. Perfect. Now, how do we want the flow of this to go? Hmm. We're going to use conveyor belts. And we've introduced the use of immobile blocks, movable blocks, pitfalls, and conveyor belts now. Okay. So. Let's see. Well, what we can do, I think, is let's kind of split this in two here. So let's grab a thing, well, not there. I think let's go here and then here. We can do that. And then let's make a line over here. Kind of separate this area. And then we can add a conveyor belt here. Why am I not snapping to grid? Okay, because I wasn't on the selection tool. That's fine. So conveyor belt's going to go over here. We're going to set it to be right. We're going to move a couple of spaces over here. Okay. So basically what we what I think I want to do is have a movable block here. That way we can um move a movable block to the conveyor belt. And we're gonna have the conveyor belt kind of take the block on a journey of sorts. And go like that. Hmm. I'm thinking I could potentially just sneak a pressure plate in here so that when you push a block through here or go through here, um, it locks a gate behind you so you can no longer move through it which would be hilarious. I think I'll do that. Let's get a pressure plate. And we're going to make this be default. So you can't see it, right? I'm going to add a gate here, which will stop you from moving. Also, I just realized on the... Uh, the gate, I still have those extra hitboxes. Which I do not need. Crap. Get rid of that one. There we go. Don't need those other hitboxes on the sides, which means this one probably also still has those two. So remove that one. And that one? Yep, okay. There that. Cool. So what we'll do is they'll they'll push the block through here. The block will hit the pressure plate and pressure port. 
pressure plate and trigger it. And let me just double check in the pressure plate, which one I need here. So, I'm gonna play the one shot. Um, if the object to manipulate is a movable block, blah, blah, blah. Um, I need to check this. Um, so we need to change this up a little bit. So we need to add um, if object to change dot active self. What does active self give? I think it is the local active state, right? If it equals true, we want to set it to false. Otherwise, we want to set it to true. So that way we can toggle things on and off and we don't have to worry about other stuff. Also, um, music would be nice. Ah. Back down to a quieter volume. Okay. And then over here, um, we want to basically just do the same thing. So let's grab this and that. Okay. So I think that should work to what I want to do with it. Um, so we're taking the pressure plate object to change being the horizontal gate. Oop, gotta load, hold on. We'll take the pressure plate horizontal thing here and that since we want to set this to that mm, right that'll only shoot no that's fine I do need to have it be is one object however that we can come back up here on enter. Add a new case. Gate. Okay. I need to do object to change. No. We're manipulating an object here. Man, my, my, my naming convention is just all over the place. All right. And so we want to basically get the thing that we're doing and do the opposite for it. So that should do what we need to do. Now that we have um, is one object checked, it should on the gate for us. Let me actually test this real quick just to see if it works. We're gonna push a block through here. Oops. So I get it lined up. There we go. Hmm. Oh, right. I need to move the object to manipulate it to be that. Now we can test it. Excellent. So we have this gate here that came up and prevents us from going through it. Perfect. So what I want to do with this is make it so the player has to push a block through there and it does some stuff. But if they go through it, they mess up the puzzle because they had to be over here to do some stuff as well. So 
Let's go ahead and from here, add another conveyor belt. I think nine, negative 90 is what I want to be. So it points downward, down. And then let's copy this. Copy that, there we go. So it goes down to here. And then I'll need to change the wall shape a little bit, but that's fine. Okay. I guess let's make the conveyor belt thing first and then we can add the, uh, the walls as necessary. So grab a conveyor belt. Uh, actually, let's just undo that. Copy one of the other ones that's pointing to the right. And we'll rotate this one to be negative 90 is down, so 90 is up. An idiot. We want to go up again. Copy this one a couple of times. And we want to just set that one to zero and go right again. Oops. Okay. So what I want it to basically do is activate something over here that is necessary in order for you to progress. Let me think here for a second. Hmm. Mm. I'm also eating a muffin again. So I was thinking I could have like a conveyor belt just coming straight down from here with like a couple pitfalls here. So one of them that you push through, it will block up a hole, then you have to move another block and get it somewhere down here. But what I wanted to do is make it so, like, there's multiple blocks along this path. And... Oh my god, I know what to do. Hold on. Hold on. That's perfect. No, is it? Not really, never mind. I was thinking I could put like a pitfall across the player's path. But I would have to push like a block through here so it would go through and prevent the player from stepping into or something. But that wouldn't work. Because the player could just take the block and push it down this way. Of 
question. Question, question, question. Let me go into the up conveyor belts. If I set it equal to three power and try to push a block down it, can I get the block past? I cannot. What if it's just set to two? I can, okay. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. That is how I do it. Okay, perfect. So let's take this down to here. No, down to, let's, let's build a little more of the level here. Um, so let's grab that one, go there. Grab this one, go here. Then I can make more of the tunnel go this way. But if I bring a conveyor belt down here, I can rotate down this way, add a blocker there and a blocker there, and then I can take I need uh, this one there. Actually, I guess the question is, can I even go across a three speed conveyor belt? No, I cannot. So my idea wouldn't work anyway. I was gonna have a conveyor belt here to prevent you from pushing a, a block through it. Unless I can manipulate the block so that when you're pushing... If I do something like... If I make immovable blocks mass and drag higher. Let's just see what happens. If I can make it cancel out when you're pushing block. Okay. Actually, could I? Put the linear drag back to zero. Do I just get like stuck when I, I can't push the block anymore? Rid of that and I can go through. Oh, so I can't. Oh my god, that's perfect. So that means I cannot push a block and move across a conveyor belt at the same time. Brilliant. That's what I needed. Okay. So I'm going to put a block here. And we're going to take the conveyor belt. Well, actually, you know what? Take this conveyor belt. We're gonna have it go left. 180 degrees right there. Put this right in there. Perfect. We'll take the movable block, put it down here so it seems like you might be able to push it through there. We're then gonna get a pitfall, put it here. That way, you uh you know, need something to go in there, right? Then we can get some more conveyor belts of the down variety. Right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there. And so if the conveyor belt works, it should take the block and move it down there, right? But we also want to layer this area off. Let's go tile map. Grab some of these. And let's grab this guy here to cap that off. Okay. I think I might do something like. I want to add more stuff over here as well. I don't want it to just be this one little puzzle, you know? Let's do something like...
do that, and then kind of have a straight wall going over to here. And kind of rounds and goes back this way. Right? Okay. I think I can use some more conveyor belts to uh, mess with this area and have more pitfalls here. Because you can't push a block around a corner, but a conveyor belt can, right? So the way this works is, if it works properly, I might have to add some immobile blocks to kind of block off any uh, escape route for this block here. So we push this block into here. It's going to go around and go into there. And then you can come across this way. Be a little difficult, but you can to get through it. Perfect. Okay, the one thing I need to check though for the pressure plate is it for a second was visible. I don't like that, so... How do I make it not do that? Because when we triggered it... Let's hide that. Where's the sound effect play? So it plays the sound effect, and... Changes the sprite renderer thing, but that shouldn't change. Why was it visible? It shouldn't be. You know what? Was that a new Boolean? Serialized field. Boolean. Show update equals true. We're going to make it always true because for the most part we would want the, the uh, pressure plate to show an update. So if show update equals true, we want to do that. Otherwise we don't want to do it. If show update equals true, do that. There we go. And then we come over to the pressure plate here and we can untick show update. Oop. That way it won't show it. Now if we go through here, it should work. Because for in cases like this, where we want to hide the pressure plate, we can do so. I keep I keep forgetting to check what happens if I just keep holding W. I keep just like pushing it a little bit, like really tenderly. But I want to see what happens if I like just go with it. Will it let me go or will I get stuck by the gate? Nope, it, it literally does stop me. Okay, then it goes on its way perfectly. It goes right into there. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying. So what we can do next is get a couple more conveyor belts. We want the down ones. And I can put them here. And we can grab ones that are going to the left, which would be this one here. And I don't think we need too many of them. I mean, I don't think we could do much if we like, we can only have one pitfall here, right? Because if we were to try to make more um, and we sent multiple blocks down here, all that would do would be to cause issues. Because once it gets off the conveyor belt, it won't be able to slide any further to get to another pitfall. We just need one. And this will show the player that the conveyor belts can go around corners, but they cannot move blocks around. So it's a little bit of a learning experience for them too. Perfect. Okay. What are we going to do up here? 
but we know we need to have a movable block somewhere up here. Because if we don't, then the player wouldn't be able to push one down here. But just having a block right there and then nothing else would be kind of... Yeah, right? We need something up here that the player can deal with. I could do like another one of these things where you have to push a block and there's a pitfall here and then you have to push another block to go down like that. Eh, that wouldn't work really, would it? Um, what should I do here? So I could add a couple more pitfalls and just have a couple of like Do that. Let's just copy a pitfall if we're going to do anything. You could make it to where you have a have to take a couple of blocks and get them through a, a maze of pitfalls without them going in a pitfall, and then you have to get at least one block to go here. So if I were to make like again, I don't know why I'm dragging from the thing when I can just copy paste so I don't have to set the spawn point every time. We just set is vertical. Copy paste. Copy paste. Copy paste. Copy paste. Copy paste. We'll just add a couple of pitfalls like that that will make the player have to go through here, and then we'll get a. The player pushes it into there, and then they can go around and do that. So they need another pressure plate here, where they have to push a block in order to allow them to get around it. Or they could just do any other combination of whatever they have, right? So we can do that. Then I just need to make some of these horizontal. It's not like it really matters. It's just like two two little pixels that the player would be seeing that change, right? In fact, I could just remove the old difference and not care about it anymore, but whatever. Okay, so we want to add another movable block right here. But you want to move one of these at least here, then you can move another one there, go around, push it down, right? And that's what you could do. Let's make it a little harder, adding a couple more pitfalls. Let's put one right there. And right there. So you push that one over to there. Push that one over here, up to there, over into there, so you can get around, go down there. Or you push that one into there. Push that one over, go around, push it down, down, push it over, go through there, go to there. That's what you could do. Right. A couple of solutions to that. I think this is fine for this level. Um, we're just kind of teaching some mechanics here. So you get one. And so obviously, the, the, the obvious thing to do for this, if you didn't pay attention to this conveyor belt, would be to push this over here, which the player can try to do. So if we hit play and we just test a level out here, if the player just tries to do this, they'll be screwed because first of all, once they get to here, they can't move it any further. And then they might be able to just barely get it out of here like this. Yeah, they can get it back. Otherwise they can just restart the level. Whatever. And if they were to try and go across this without getting a block, they just end up back to the spawn area. So nice. Nice. 
there's one thing I wanted to check also with the assets. If I were to copy this, this is the copyright. Oops, not that. Um, not that button, this one. So if I hmm, write editor, can I secondary textures? I was wondering if I could just like recolor this. Custom outline. I don't know what that does. That looks like I can. Or could I? Ooh. I guess it just grayscales it. I was thinking that was the I saw a color thing up here and I was like, ooh, color. But now it just scales that. Okay, well, that's not what I want. I don't see any color here either. I know with like individual things, sometimes it, I guess not, never mind. What did I just do? Oh. R. G. I guess I could kind of recolor them like this. But yes. I think that, like. Yeah, that's weird. That's not what I want to do. I don't know. Okay. We'll just delete this one. You have to delete that. Bye bye. Okay. See, so yeah, I'll just have to recolor them when we're done with the game here. But. Ugh. Okay. So, let's just go ahead and throw our items where they need to go. Let's grab all of our pitfalls. Let's just lock this first of all. It falls. Oop. We have our pressure plate. And we have our gate. I don't think I want to add a gate there, though. That might be complicated. Well, let's just back out of here for a second. And then we just need to add a couple of movable blocks to our items to respawn. We need to add our block spawns. There's three of them this time, thank God. If there was any more, I would be very unhappy. Getting used to doing like 80 of them at a time was not great. Okay. That should be everything that I have to edit. My only question is what happens if I reset the level when I push the gate? Now, if I hit restart level, yeah, the gate stays there. I might have to add a script to the gates.
like a very stupidly simple like thing. Or I could make a generic one for future use. Let's create a 2D script called check if active. Or I guess I can just call it is active. here we'll open it up so all this is going to do is take a serialized field boolean active at start and that's all it's going to do that's, that's the whole script like i said it's a very stupid script Active at start, we're going to leave as false. We need to make that public actually. I'm just going to make that public real quick. Reload the stuff. Okay. Let's go to prefabs. Open up our gates. I'm going to add an is active to them all. Right? Hit that change. And we're gonna have it be yes active at start. Start. Bloop, bloop. Okay. And now in our level reset script, for each gate, we want to check if g dot get component is active dot active at start equals true else okay so if active at start is true we'll do that if it's false we'll set it to false that should in theory fix the issue Toggle, let's just reset. Why, uh, yeah, right, right. I know why I didn't do it because I didn't set a gate here. Everything I have to do, right? Yes, okay. Okay. One more time with feeling. Boosh. Okay, the gate's gone. You dare? Is it not? I have the gate there. This thing has is that oh there's two is active now. Right. That's probably why. Remove that component. Now let's try it again.
triggered. Restart the level. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> okay. Uncheck that box. There we go. Excellent. All right, so that is level one nine finished. Um, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. I always need to do the dialogue, which obviously we can probably send that down to five. So, what is the dialogue going to be for this? <coughs> Congratulations, you've made it. I don't know, let's see. Like, da 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 So previously, you know what, actually what we can do, let's just save this level down to here. So it's a prefab now. Close out of that. Open up level eight. We can put level nine over here. Save that. Let's also go ahead and open up our game world so we can put level nine there. Save. Unload that scene. Open up level nine so we can switch back and forth between here. So let's see. Uh, in level eight, we had them say not bad. Let's add a new element, something outside of control. Platforms will move anything on them. You'll need to think ahead. Okay. Let's say moving past the mess of the last level. Let's try something more so sophisticated. Google! Is that how you spell sophisticated? So, sophisticated. I think it is, but let's just double check. Got it right. Hell yeah. <clears throat> okay, next. Let's try something more sophisticated. You will still need to think. But things are more clear. The last experiment, experiment could have been just luck after all. All right. So we have moving past the initial the, the, the mess of the last level, which it was a mess. So we're acknowledging that this was just a mess and whatnot. We say, we've made the level look nicer. Things are a little more clear cut. It's neater. How will you survive this, right? And uh, kind of tells them, that the last experiment could have been luck, because it could have been. Um, I think we determined that some of the conveyor belts can kind of just mess up at times and just not work right. And you have three after all, so if, I mean, if you just look and see like, okay, this conveyor belt just goes here, that one, easily, whatever, and the rest of them you can just push blocks onto until you get the correct answer. So as long as you eliminate one, you have enough blocks to get it done. Cool. All right, so that's level nine completed. Level 10 is left. Ooh, Un do that one. You know what, actually, before we do that, I wanna test this level with the dialogue going to check for something. So give me a moment. Let's see how fast you can do this one. Okay, plenty of time. Excellent. We're gonna hide something here quick. I'm going to create an empty, well, not an empty, um. Hmm. What to do here? What to do? Because I want to add text. I 
guess I'll just use a UI thing. Wait, no. Don't do that. I'll just do it in here. Uh, add UI text. Well, okay. Let's go out here. Let's turn on the text box. And let's make this bold and underline it. And let's change the size of the text box here. And let's make this like 70 point font. Now let's try like 90% font. Center it, center it. What about like 120% font? Game, there we go. Okay. Just a little like Easter egg. Oop. Just a little like Easter egg, like sort of funny ha ha thing. I'm gonna put this text box here. Um, that says the game. For those of you who do not know, who might be too young, um, there's this thing called the game. And if you acknowledge the game at any time, you lose the game. That's the game. It was it was big when I was in like middle school and high school and stuff. And people would just say the game, you just lost it. But it was a, it was an old, old meme. So now I'm just trying to figure out how to get this behind the other stuff. Do I need to do that? Oh wait, I, I yeah, hold on. I have to do it in here. Can I really not? Like, hold on. Let me move this here. Copy this. Open this up. Can I paste that in here now? I can. Okay. But the text box is open. Right, since the lull is above it in thing there. And then once the text box closes, you see the game. Nice. Cool. Okay, let's get rid of that. And let's hit play. So, oh wait, hold on. I need to hide the text box again. Yeah, so the text box should by default be off. Save that. Let me look at the level script again. Level, 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 level. So, not the level, the uh, auto talking script. Wait for a second. Let's give it less time. Otherwise, the game will be as visible for like fraction of a second. Okay, so. Didn't I? Watching you. Okay, so yeah, you can kind of see something for like a second. You'd have to like really be waiting for it. It goes by. And then after that, it disappears. And you see the game. Right there. Perfect. Perfect. That's great. Although. Let's try 0 0.25 seconds for the chat box to pop up. Because there's like loading times and stuff to take into consideration, and it is possible that, you know. If the player loads in slower, they would be able to see it right away. I don't know. I think that's fine, right there. So, we'll do that. Now we have a little little Easter egg in the game and whatnot. 
for that. I was also thinking of doing that, like, uh, the, like, below the waist okay sign kind of thing. Whatever that is. I don't know what that's called, but I thought it'd be fun to incorporate. So, level nine is completed, ladies and gentlemen. Good shit. All right. With that completed, I think it's a good time to just kind of wrap things up and end. We've been going at it for four hours and 40 minutes at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, I could mill through, try to do level 10, complete it so we can start on the next stuff. But I do have some stuff to do today. And it's already 3 p.m. for me. So I'm going to let you all go for now. And next time, we'll finish level 10. We'll import in the new color palette for levels 11 through 20. And we will begin to create the next level set, whatever. Probably start incorporating other uh, elements into the game. It'd be nice to incorporate the uh, pressure plate and lever as soon as possible so that we can actually use that stuff and have it be fun, you know? So, anyway, that's all for me, everyone. Till next time tomorrow, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.